Intermittent fasting is a lifestyle change that has, in the past few years, been championed by popular culture. This eating pattern involves alternating cycles of feeding and fasting. In addition to benefits in weight loss, intermittent fasting has also been connected to improved health outcomes, including improved lifespan. While the practice has only recently gained global traction, intermittent fasting is ancient and has long been practiced globally. However, despite an almost never-ending supply of public information regarding intermittent fasting, there is a shortage of evidence-based support to guide this public health practice. In this video, we will try to bridge this gap by explaining a major mechanism behind some of the benefits of intermittent fasting called autophagy. Autophagy, literally self-eating, is a blanket term describing the different ways by which cells can degrade used up materials. Although it may seem like the cells are eating themselves, autophagy is actually a process that protects cells from damage. Autophagy has an important role in determining the lifespan of many organisms, and reduced autophagy is associated with accelerated aging and decreased longevity, while stimulation of autophagy may have anti-aging effects. However, just as autophagy can protect cells, it can also cause harm. Before we get into that, let's discuss what happens during autophagy. The body uses sensor proteins to detect the levels of nutrients within its cells. In the absence of some essential nutrients, like what might happen during a diet, these sensor proteins send out a signal. This signal is carried to several other proteins and converges on proteins called master regulators. These master regulators then activate the recycling process of autophagy so that the cell can recycle some of its used up components. Autophagy begins when cell contents are isolated in a type of wrap called the isolation membrane. Next, several autophagy-related proteins, or ATG proteins, associate with this membrane. The resulting structure can then break down these sequestered contents into simpler components that can be released back into the cell where they are reused for nutrients and energy. Autophagy plays an important role in determining your lifespan, and many diseases actually develop because of problems with autophagy. In fact, Autophagy dysfunction is documented in Alzheimer's, Huntington's, and Parkinson's disease. This is because autophagy prevents the collection of toxic protein aggregates, such as those observed in these neurodegenerative diseases. As well, autophagy is associated with the proper structuring of an important cell structure called the mitochondria. This is vitally important, since in most complex animals, like humans, the mitochondria is important for producing energy and proper functioning is key to removing harmful reactive oxygen species, which can cause inflammation. Unfortunately, however, this important mechanism is sometimes also exploited to cause harm. By inhibiting autophagy early on, precancerous cells can shut down some of the body's quality control mechanisms, allowing these abnormal cells to grow. This allows the cells to continue dividing, eventually forming a tumor. As the tumor grows, cells on the inside are starved for nutrients, and by reactivating autophagy, they can ensure their survival. Since these tumor cells don't work properly, they accumulate damaged products over time. Normally, when cells accumulate too many defects, they activate a controlled self-destruction to prevent these defects from spreading. However, by activating autophagy, the tumor cells can remove these damaged proteins, allowing them to undergo further divisions. While autophagy has its downsides, there is a growing body of evidence suggesting the role of autophagy in preventing malignancy, infection, neurodegenerative diseases, and in the slowing of aging. One way we can activate autophagy is by caloric restriction, which is defined as a 10-40% to 40 decrease in caloric intake without a reduction in dietary nutritional content. Caloric restriction has been shown to prevent several age-related diseases, including high blood pressure and diabetes in humans. However, for many people, caloric restriction is not sustainable. Fortunately, in the past decade, an alternative eating regime called intermittent fasting has fallen into the limelight. Intermittent fasting comes in several different flavors, of which we will discuss three. Complete alternate day fasting involves alternating days of fasting, when only energy-lacking food or beverages are consumed, followed by days of eating, when food and beverages are consumed as one pleases. Modified fasting regimes involve only consuming 20-25% to 25 of your daily energy needs. For people with light to moderate activity levels, this means around 750 calories per day for men and 550 calories a day for women. This is the basis for the 5-2 to two diet, where the energy restriction occurs only two days a week. Time-restricted feeding involves eating as you please during specific time frames and fasting from energy containing food and drink for the remainder of the day. Most commonly, this involves eating for 8 hours a day and fasting for the remaining 16. In all cases, these have been associated with weight loss and reduction of many markers of disease such as elevated blood insulin and blood glucose levels. With that said, you might be wondering, well, which is best? And the answer to that depends on you. In order to achieve long-term metabolic improvements, it's important to select a diet to which you can make a long-term commitment. Before starting any diet, it is important to consult first with your doctor. 
This is especially important if you have pre-existing health conditions, such as diabetes, low blood pressure, and issues with blood sugar regulation or pregnancy.